So, Ramona, what can you tell us about the timing for this decision for the Hawks? Well, look, a lot of teams wait till the offseason to make moves like this. The Hawks have lost four or six going into the break. They're sitting at eight right now. This is a team that's underachieved, at least from their own expectations. And the teams behind them, Toronto and Washington, they're, they're coming. And so if you're going to make a change now, then you have a chance to have a – Joe Prunty will be the interim coach. They'll have a chance to have a little bump here as they go into the – as they try to make a playoff run. But the other reason why, and this is as our A.J. Wojnarowski reported yesterday Quinn Snyder probably the most attractive head coach on the market that you get a jump on him now it, from all the other teams that might wait until the offseason to fire the coach and have a, a large search here so Quinn Snyder former coach of the Utah Jazz just sitting there in Texas sitting waiting plotting his next move deciding when and where he might want to coach again the logic makes sense to try to get a jump on their next head coach I agree with that but if you're Quinn Snyder, you got to wait to see where Victor goes before you make a decision, unless somebody's going to give you a blank check. Um, the other thing I want to say about the Hawks, they have a dynamic backcourt. Trey Young has shown me that he's a franchise, legitimate franchise player. Scores the ball, assists. DeJounte Murray is a terrific addition to that team. But a couple of dominoes didn't happen for the Hawks. Yep. When you draft Cam Reddish, you need that to work. It didn't work. When you get DeAndre Hunter in your building, you want him to – he's been a productive player, but you wanted him to be a more dominant player. And it seems like the last couple of years, it's all about Trey Collins, Trey Collins. I like him with Trey. He's not having his best season, but ultimately you're trying to get back what you got a couple of years ago, where they outplayed expectations. Yep. So now when you make it to the conference finals, it's like we should be doing that every year. And so you're now trying to reach for something that you were already ahead of the curve. So I'm not necessarily mad at it. I just hope Nate McMillan lands on his feet. So, yeah, I think a lot of the conversation centers upon that unrealistic a little mm. bit expectation that they're supposed to be in, you know, Eastern Conference finalists every year. The guys have a lot of confidence. That's what Trey Young plays with. Perk, what are the actual realistic expectations for the Hawks? Well, well let me say this, Janae. Didn't the Hawks two years ago – go to the Eastern yep. Conference Finals under the leadership of Nate McMillan. And now you look at this roster, and to me, Ed Murray was a serious upgrade. They have the pieces to compete. So to, in my opinion, I understand that it seems like that Nate McMillan lost the locker room. But here's the thing that I, here's the thing that I have a problem with right now. Right? Y'all know how I feel about Trey Young. He's one of the most disrespected superstars in the game today. But players on this team, I watched this team play. Their body language sucked while Nate McMillan was trying to coach and hold them accountable. And now today, we didn't have, they didn't have two African-American coaches get fired, right? And I get it. Coach Lloyd wasn't doing a great job. Nate McMillan came in and was doing a decent job. But my thing is, is this. He was trying to hold those guys accountable. Okay, and right now I'm looking at this roster and not physically, but mentally, they're softer than funeral music when it comes down to be held accountable. And so the players need to understand or try to realize what the hell are they trying to accomplish? Like, is, is it a bunch of individuals who are trying to make all-star games and all NBA teams? Or is it a team that actually have championship aspirations? I kind of feel like Coach Nate McMillan got the short end of the stick on this one. I really felt like he didn't deserve to lose his job because he's trying to hold guys accountable to, to, to make sure that they get the team goal and not individual goal. So now I don't want to hear nothing else, no more excuses. The guy that comes in place, Trey Young has to deliver in great, in great fashion. Murray has to deliver in great fashion. Clint Capella, Collins, and uh, uh, Bogdanovich, they have to, to deliver in great fashion. I, I really didn't like this, this, this fire, and I didn't think Coach Nate McMillan deserved that. When you go watch the Clippers, when they, they get up for teams when they play a big team, when it's a big game, but they have too many times where there's yeah, it's a random Tuesday in Charlotte, it's a random Tuesday against where they, they're flat. And we, Russ is the kind of guy that will make that locker room perform on those kind of games. Plus, from a content perspective and a chemistry perspective, it was not that long ago. In 2019, Russell Westbrook, then in Oklahoma City, called up Kawhi Leonard, who was a free agent in Toronto, and said, hey, I, I might like to play with you. What do you think? And Kawhi said, oh, that's interesting. And uh, said, 
well, I, I think I'd rather play with the other guy. And that was what started the whole domino mm. where he calls Paul George, says, hey, Russ called me and wanted to play with me. He, don't get left behind. You should just come to me, with, come with me to L.A. That whole dynamic is now in the same locker room. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's going to be fun. Uh, let's get Big Perk <laughs> in the building. Uh, what's up, though, in the NBA perspective with you, Perk? You know what? We talk about the Milwaukee Bucks, we talk about the Boston Celtics, we even talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Philadelphia 76ers when it comes to the East, the top dogs in the East, and we just keep disrespecting them goons from Dade County. <laughs> and I'm talking about Eric Spolcher and the Miami Heat. When we think about last year, them going to the Eastern Conference Finals, they were a Jimmy Butler pull-up three away from advancing to the NBA Finals. And when I think about Jimmy Butler, look, he's not your typical regular season superstar player. But when it comes to the postseason, he instantly becomes a top five player in the league. I love the addition of Kevin Love because now it gives them spacing to operate between him and Bam out of the bio, out of bio. <laughs> and then also when it comes down when it comes down to coaching, right? When it comes down to making adjustments in the seven game series, I mean, are we really gonna bet against Eric Spoelstra like that when it comes to game planning? He's one of the best in the game. Perk, do you think that the Suns are set up for a decade of dominance, like we heard from their owner? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Why should I? Right? And, and I get it. Look, I understand. Kevin Durant is one of, if not the best player in the world. I believe it's Giannis Antetokounmpo, but we could debate that all day long. But when it comes down to KD, right, the only time that he has allowed us to trust him is when he's playing alongside Steph Curry. Other than that, when he fell, when he was playing with Russell Westbrook in the Oklahoma City Thunder, they did nothing when he had Kyrie Irving and James Harden. And now I understand you're going with arguably the best two guard in the league. You're, you're pairing alongside an agent, Chris Paul, and they must win now. But to say that like they could go on a, a, a multiple streak of winning titles, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it with Kevin Durant. <laughs> actually could build the team and, and come there and actually be the leader without it already without the foundation already being laid okay we've got two sides to this uh Jalen do you agree with Ishbia or do you agree with Perk well the, the one thing about this situation Perk is a, a couple of things that you mentioned is KD doesn't have to be the leader because that's Chris Paul they have a great coach in Monty Williams who's also going to hold people accountable and this is a turnkey situation the Suns made it to the Western Conference Finals and the NBA Finals two years ago. They were the number one seed in the West last year. Now they add KD. But here's the other thing that Matt Ishby is going to be able to unlock. Phoenix is a destination spot that they couldn't take advantage of under Robert Sarver because, you know, a lot of people just didn't respect him as an owner in a lot of ways. I think now they're going to be able to use Phoenix as an attraction to bring other players. So now when you see big free agents that are becoming that are, that become available, they're now going to look to sign with the Suns. And lastly, Devin Booker is just entering in his prime. Mm. And you said he's the second best shooting the best shooting guard in the game. And so I think the sky's the limit for their potential. You know what? That's an excellent point, Jalen, about him not needing to be the leader. When he has been at his best, when Kevin Durant has been at his best, it's when he played along somebody else or in an organization that had great leadership. That was with the Golden State Warriors where they had Bob Myers, Steph Curry, Steve Kerr. And in Brooklyn, a lot of the issues that he talked about, a lot of the issues he had with the Nets were he just wants to show up and play ball. He doesn't want to manage Kyrie. He doesn't want to manage that locker room. And I think that is what he is set up to do in Phoenix. The question about the Suns, though, they actually have, even though they gave up a lot in that trade to get Kevin Durant, they actually do have more assets. We have to see where DeAndre Ayton fits into this situation here. If he doesn't fit in, I think he has some value if they want to look to retool and move him someplace else and, and, and see what they can get for him. Chris Paul's contract is only partially guaranteed for next year. Only $15 million of that is guaranteed. And they have what <laughs> you always hear from a new owner, enthusiasm. I remember sitting eight years ago when Steve Ballmer came into the league, and that, that press conference is something I'll never forget, <laughs> that enthusiasm. And it doesn't mean you're going to win. They haven't won since then. But when you have an owner who is enthusiastic, deep-pocketed, not, not afraid to take some swings, 
as they did in this one. They added $40 million to their luxury tax. Ooh. In that story, Brian and I reported a, a couple a week ago, they would he, even bat an eye. Yeah, $40 Brian. million, dollars. okay, sure. If you have an owner who's willing to do that, you, you, might, you have a good chance of being in contention. Yeah, Brian, where do you stand on it? Because you both did an excellent reporting on the matter. I'm not worried about 20, 20, 2031. I'm not worried about 2024. <laughs> this team is built to win this year in 2023. And that's why Durant wants to make sure he's okay when he gets out on the court. They have the firepower in a Western Conference that's wide open, and they're going to start doing it ASAP. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.